Um, okay, this is the ninth AIU, Atlantic International University Symposium online. And the theme of this symposium is My Legacy to Future Generations. My name is Dr. Edward Lambert. I'm hosting this symposium. And we are now going to move on to our next presenter, Francis Kwame Tsidi, who, let me go ahead and make him a presenter right now. There you are. Francis Kwame Tsidi. You are able to share your screen now. You're able to talk, activate your microphone. Yeah, can you hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you. It's wonderful to hear you. Okay, and um, is my screen viewable? Um, I, we don't see your, are you sharing your PowerPoint? Yes, uh, it's available to share, but uh, what? If you want me to, I can share it from my screen. Okay. You want me to? I hope you have the latest, right? Um, I have the one that you originally sent. No, I sent you, I sent you an updated version um, about some 24 or 30 hours ago. And I follow same with a, with a voice, voice calls voice message, which I left for you, and then follow that with uh, an email. Because I had to do some few correction on the old one, please. So anyhow, if you can guide how the screen will have to be shared, no problem. I can make what I have here available. Let me show you the one that I have. This is the one that I have available no, I, here. I, I have corrected this. Even the heading is just about five yeah, words. I'm, I'm looking through my email right now. I don't see your new presentation. Please, that should be there. That should be there. Sent yesterday night or so. Ah, yes, I see it now. So we can make do, that one available for other yes. colleagues as well. Let yeah. me go ahead and switch these up. There, does that look correct now? Exactly so, thank you so much. Okay, when you, when you need to go to the next slide, just let me know. All right, thank you. Um, Friends, depending on which part of the globe you are, I greet you good evening from Accra, Ghana. And uh, as per why we are here, we, some of us are, are, are asked or privileged to share with you what we deem as our legacies that we would like to leave for the generations behind us or even the generations that we are in a bracket with. So by way of introduction, I am Chidi Francis Kwame, and then my student ID, you can see. I'm privileged to read a um, doctorate degree in intelligence and security studies at the AIU, and I am a police officer, and I'm assistant commissioner of police serving in the Ghanaian police service. We can roll. I have a very short presentation and uh, this is my scope. I want to look at, share some few lines, few lines on my early life, my education, what I term as my childhood vision, which indeed has become the vision of my life, my career contribution, wow. some, few, wow. some few experiences in international peace, peacekeeping and then my future priorities for the Ghanaian, police and then how it will impact on Ghana and maybe beyond. Mm. Early life, I was born uh, somewhere July 25th, 1970, so I'm uh, a little over 50 now. And um, I was privileged enough to be plucked from my parents, I mean my two, my father and my mom, by my grandfather, 
um, to a fishing village somewhere in the south, southeastern canal of this country. And uh, within that environment, is uh, the settlement is a spit, what we call in geography, we call it sand spit. It's a spit to the, to the south is the Atlantic Ocean and to the north is a very big lagoon. We are told the largest lagoon in West Africa, that is a Keta Lagoon. And so if you are brought up in such an environment, you very much are likely to become a fisherman than any other profession. We move on. And indeed, I did a lot of fishing. And most times, I had to choose going to the classroom, either to go to the sea or to go to lagoon to look for fish. However, nature has been kind. I progressed through the primary system, and I went to Buampo Secondary School in the central part of the country, why I read for my O-level and the A-level uh, uh, certificate examinations. Now, uh, I have um, the second paragraph for the for slide two as a very interesting one I want to share with you. While I was in the school, uh, in those days, it, uh, there, there is a, a train system. We have a, somehow a, a rail system that operates from Accra to Takrade, I mean, for the benefit of those of you who don't have the, the geography of this country, Accra is the capital of the nation. And then we have a railway line dissecting from Accra to the central part and then Accra to the western part. So my father was a, a poor, um, low ranking police officer living somewhere along the railway line then in a town called Chufupraso, which has no other road except the rail line. And so on one of those occasions, I was sacked from school from Dunkwa, which is almost about 100, 100 miles to the north of that place. And I made half of the journey by rail. And then you have to make another journey by rail to where my father was. And then when I went for this school fees that I was sacked for, there was a derailment. So the train line that was supposed to connect to Takrade for me to connect to Dunkwa was not working. And so I had to walk 30 miles from mile 0030 to mile, mile post 000. Anyhow, I, I scaled through those challenges of life and finally entered the University of Cape Coast. At the time, one of the three leading universities in Ghana, public universities. And then I entered 1991 through to 1996, where I graduated with a bachelor degree in economics, um, sorry, diploma in economics and a bachelor degree in education. And those were done concurrently. We'll move on, please. And then I followed up a letter to read MPhil in educational planning at the same university. And then of recent 2012, I graduated with MA, uh, Masters in Conflict, Peace, and Security Studies at the um, University of Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administrations and the Kofiana International Peacekeeping Training Center. And uh, here I am, I'm offering a delayed PhD uh, now at AIU about me so far to do with education. We we'll move on, please. Now, in very interesting, when I was in the barracks, as a barrels boy, in fact, I mean, later when I had to leave my grandfather to join my parents because I was now then at the secondary school or the high school, I had an encounter with a police officer that imprinted on me throughout my life till date. My own father who was in the police uniform never became my, my role model. And then just as Dr. Lambert uh, said some few minutes ago, Growing up, he got influenced by the speeches of uh, Martin Luther King, uh, Martin Luther. And uh, I believe I, I, I was also in the same situation. I had an encounter with this police officer and I just had a serious admiration for him, trying to know more about him. And then I went straight to him after I've observed him for some time, I went to him and told him that, you know what, I want to be like you. And then he asked me, are you sure you want to be like me 10 times? And I said, yes, I want to be like you. So why? I said, then I mentioned all the qualities I saw in him. And the advice he gave me then was that if you want to be like me, 
Forget about being like me today. Learn hard, go to your university. If it is God's design that one day you serve this nation as a police officer, it shall truly come to pass. We we'll move on. We we'll move on, please. And so I got enlisted into the Ghana Police Service 2000, year 2000, uh, um, as an officer with uh, uh, a beginning rank of assistant commissioner of police. The graduation, of course, the initial enlistment training, and then final graduation took almost about four years. And interestingly, I served in many roles, um, both in an investigation, and then finally I was brought to the, the, the research and planning directorate where I actually actualized myself engaging and deploying all the theories and principles that are learned in planning into, into fruition to help the Ghanaian police service. And until recently, before I was brought here, I served as a chief of staff of the Ghana police service. Please move on. My contribution, the first product I, I worked on when I joined the Ghana police service as an officer call was to put up a paper for revision of what used to be women and juvenile units, which they call Waju at the time. When I joined the police, I tried to review what was the reason behind the establishment of Waju or women and juvenile units in the service. And I realized it was too so narrow scoping and not serving the broader units of the Ghanaian society. In other words, I found that unit as a tool for women uh, shipping at the recalcitrant men or men or disappointing men. And so I decided to have a broader reading on how to realign this very unit. Fortunately for me, at the time 2004, the Ghanaian parliament was also de de debating domestic violence bill which became Domestic Violence Act. And so I realigned this unit as Domestic Violence and Victim Support Unit to enforce, to enforce domestic violence laws and then children related acts and, 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 and laws in this country. And that is what has been ongoing in the past maybe 19 or 18 years now. It is one unit that has Nationwide coverage, all starting from me. All right. And then I also worked on um, establishment of a peacekeeping department of the Ghana Police Service. At the time, I became an officer of the uh, research, research and planning directorate. That was nothing like that. Each time a request came from, from the DPKO, as we call it there, that is Department for Peacekeeping Operation, which is now Department for Peace Support Operation, they do what I saw as foot surgery. In other words, they only gather one or two or three people to go and then do what we call SAT test for uh, persons who qualify to be deployed for peacekeeping. And I thought that that was not the best thing to do at the time. So I came out with a paper proposing for a whole department to be established for peacekeeping operation and also making sure that we have quality officers that will go to serve on peacekeeping assignment, wherever the United Nations will call us for. We move on, please. I also created a strategic office for regional command commanders. That office has never been in existence when I joined the Ghana Police Service. However, due to one or two studies and a personal observation I made, I proposed this and now all the regional commanders have what we call executive office, which represents their secretariat and administration of the region. Another interesting thing, at the time I was at the research and planning, we had a serious upsurge in railway robbery to a magnitude that Ghana has never seen before. And it was as if we were going to lose it to rubbish on the highway. Many theories were proposed as well, once again, um, 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 foot soldiering approach. But I looked through the system and then I proposed to the, to the Inspector General then that there was a need for us to establish 
what I call a highway patrol, dedicated highway patrols that will man the entire highways, especially the West African, West African highways, which runs from Nigeria, running through Republic of Benin, through Togo, through Ghana, and then to uh, Ivory Coast, and then beyond Ivory Coast, which of course is not too effective uh, talking about where my country is. But between us and Nigeria, I mean, it runs like, a, like one entity. So um, that highway patrol teams were formed. And today, as I speak, they are on the highway fighting robbery. Very interesting product also has to do with conducting research on these uh, units. And many revelations came out of that, which led to realignment and then reconfiguration of some of the units and then uh, proposing some capacity building um, um, packages for officers and men of the service. Maybe one of my products of all the products will be the Marine Police. When Ghana found oil, I mean, before 2008, we never knew of any one barrel of oil um, as credited to Ghana as oil producing country. But it so happened somewhere 2008, by then I was in the United Nations a peacekeeping operation in, uh, in Sudan. When we all heard that Ghana has found oil. So whilst I was in the mission, I started asking colleagues from Nigeria, colleagues from Norway, colleagues from other oil producing countries to give me an idea about how the police system fit into oil security. And I learned a lot from some of them. So by the time I came home, I had gotten a lot of notes on how oil is policed. And so when I came back and joined the service, I was privileged once again to be sent back to the research and planning department. And so I continued what I was doing. Friends, I spent almost about eight months running from the shoreline with Ivory Coast to the west, to Togo to the east just trying to understand the topography of our shorelines and then how the police will fit into it. And eventually I came up with a document which was equally adopted at the cabinet level and then the government or the state decided to now give, establish a marine police which once upon a time existed in 19, from 1900 and then got defunct somewhere 1930 there about. So I got this established now, and I can tell you on authority that the territorial waters, in other words, the brown waters of Ghana is now policed by the force, and we expect our, our naval force to go be, be beyond the territorial waters into the, uh, to the contiguous zone, and then what we call the economic and exclusive, exclusive zone that is up to 200 knots uh, from the shoreline. We can move on. Okay, well, God and nature has been very kind to me. I have gone out of my own jurisdiction to see life elsewhere. My first engagement was in South Sudan or, or Southern Sudan, as it, it was then called, uh, from 2006 to 2008. And um, I later also was appointed as a planning advisor for the United Nations Peace keeping Department of Peacekeeping Operation, as uh, particularly the police division as a planning advisor for the standing police capacity, which is based in Italy. And Hello. my role, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, um, um, am I lost? Hello? You are on. Okay, thank you. Well, I was, I was, I was highlighting Second, the second item on this on this slide. So eventually, my deployment, my appointment to the standing police capacity saw me deployed to Abia, which is a very controversial area in Sudan, for United Nations Interim Security Force for Abia, and I served there in a startup capacity. Maybe later we'll explain what a startup means. 
Somewhere along the line, I was also deployed to my uh, country that I call my second country, uh, to Sierra Leone for UNIPSIL. And over there, I was also assigned a very unique, a very unique role. I went to Sierra Leone to witness the total fo final folding of the United Nations peacekeeping activities or peace building activities in that country. And that was um, 2014 thereabout. I was also deployed to Somalia as a planning advisor for UNSOM, the African Union mission in Somalia, where I was engaged in a lot of strategic planning for the two missions. We move on, please. I also provided some backup, what we call remote support for MINUSCA, that is a, a United Nations um, United Nations multi-dimensional um, integrated stabilization force or stabilization mission in Central African Republic and then uh, Mali. And in the case of Mali, I was involved in FISMA planning and then finally we handed over to United Nations. Once again, I left for Accra. I was involved in uh, some other strategic behind the scene planning for RBA and the Liberia, which finally also draw, drew down some, some one or one or two, two years or three years ago. I was also involved in a lot of planning to do with Syria, which never was a, um, 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 the small UN mission in, in, in Iraq. Please we'll move on. Okay. Summing up all this kindness of God and then the experiences I've gone through and then my own contribution as of now, and then the chances I can perceive in front of me, this is what I want to do. I want to embark on serious professionalization of the Ghanaian police service. Given the chance I want to if do effective deployment of ICT to make this police service more, more, more robust, and more service delivering than I have come to meet it. And then also make community policing as one of my flagship projects than I have come to meet it. And then make sure that the police and the public have a better, better mutual trusting than I have come to meet it. And then also to make sure that I make this police organization a lead institution in revenue generation for this country. Maybe if I have the opportunity through your questions, I will answer how I will do it. So friends, maybe you go to the, my last paragraph. My last paragraph, please. Yes. I saw my legacy that I want to leave, that I have started leaving and will leave behind as that I want to be a reference and a source of hope for children who are disadvantaged in social and economic standing. That those children must trust in themselves and see in themselves a seed by God in each. And that when they aspire and work hard, that seed in them will germinate into the fruit that God has actually expected from them. And then the benefit will be for themselves their own country and to humanity. And they are growing up as children, they must remain focused and identify a model as I have and aspire to be same. And I conclude, in my view, no human is useless. Thank you. Hello, thank you so much, Francis, for that an inspiring presentation. The floor is now open for anybody that... Um, yeah, I'm here. The floor is now open for anybody that has questions and comments yeah. about the presentation. Harding, yes, Amadou, yeah. are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, a, it's an excellent uh, presentation, you know, starting from Ali Live to where he is today. It's very, very, very inspiring. Uh, coming back to what we were discussing before his presentation, some participants um, brought up um, asked some questions about what resources 
do we have to pass on an education, to pass on education or legacy, to impact society? I think, um, my brother here, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. Uh, you, I can hear you. You, you, you are from your stripes, what you've done with your life, you've, you've actually created an embodiment that people can feed from. Congratulations and thank you very much. Of course, I am hiding from Sierra Leone. I felt so good you mentioned Sierra Leone to be your second country. Thank you for your effort in the Unuxil drawdown. Uh, thank you, all of you that helped in stabilizing Sierra Leone again to a serene environment, quiet environment from that brutality, that decadence of that uh, decadence of the war, uh, institutional breakdown, and all of that. Thank you very much. But what I am seeing, I am not just seeing a paper. I am seeing an embodiment from which society can tap from. Like I started mentioning, people were asking about resources, what it takes, yeah, what it takes to actually be able to give back to society. I think your life is all of that. You started, you know, struggling, you dreamt, and you actualize your dream. From your presentation, it's not even your father that motivated you, it's that you saw as a hero. It's somebody else, but in the force. Uh, today, uh, uh, lest I forget, I used to work before working at the National, National Pension Scheme, that's the National Social Security and Insurance Trust. I used okay. to work with an NGO, working with the police to ensure people get their rights, uh, that people's rights are being um, observed, are being respected. We worked with the police to, you know, see how the, the detainees, suspect, we are being treated according to what is set out in, in the constitution, all of that. Your, the way I see how, the passion you, you have, the passion you are really uh, showing in the presentation, it touches me a lot that I wish I had this kind of people in our police. I know even at, in Ghana there, you have lots of other police officers that cannot impact the way you have done. It is not just today. It started a long way ago, a long, long, long way back. But today, that is what you are. Um, once again, thank you very much. And for me, I have been inspired by your great work. And um, at AIU now presently, as I'm, I'm trying to expand on my horizon, on my knowledge, to tap into the ideas of other people, like I am getting it right now here as we speak, I'll actually try to ensure I go back. I've got, I'm doing public administration and I deal with the public institutions. I have been navigating um, um, public authorities. I have been making advocacies. I have been engaging in community education as to how institutions work. And as at now, I find myself in st still in a public institution that is there kick, uh, kicking for um, um, pension after retirement or after uh, when you go invalid or for the survivors. So I hope to tap into that of your struggle. It's a huge struggle. Now I have now learned that legacy cannot be achieved by just sitting on a table to, to make a write-off. No, that's, it is perfect for me. And that legacy is not just what you have in you, it's what you take to be able to get out the things that are so special in you and to be able to bear up all of the constraints in life in order to, to actually get your mold that can feed, that people can feed from. I know on your journey, as I conclude, you took in lots of experiences. That's the garbage in, garbage out situation. Now you are standing tall and people are tapping from your expertise. You have helped Ghana a lot. 
from your presentation. And it started from a, a single step, a single decision that you took and the desire to pursue what you wanted to, to be today. Thank you so very much. It's notable. And I hope this slide will be shared. I, hope, I, 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 I really want to have this presentation linked to me if Dr. Lambert can do that. Because at times I engage uh, institutions like the police that I have here in Sierra Leone. I still engage with them, even though I'm finding myself now in a bit of a, some kind of a, um, um, professional career that is not related to them, but I have passion in dealing with their own institutions in terms of justice, in terms of helping the needy, because Sierra Leone is, is made. Sierra Leone is a constraint of um, indigents, poor people, particularly in the rural areas. So I still have that passion to interface with them. So I beg uh, Dr. Lambert, if you can get this link, if this presentation was actually recorded so that I will be able to use it and <laughs> make some engagement. Uh, all, of the, by... all of the presentations are being recorded. All right, thank you very much. So if, if anybody needs the recording, I guess the best thing to do is contact your tutor and ask for the link. Okay. Thank you so much, Harding Amadou, for your, your thoughts. You're continuing yeah. inspirational thoughts. You are inspired. <laughs> You're inspiring me with your energy. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, let's go to Charles Niame. I don't think Charles has had a chance to speak yet. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I am Reverend Father Charles Niame, uh, originally from Nigeria but currently working in the Republic of Ireland. And I am particularly inspired by this wonderful presentation uh, by Officer Francis. And for the fact that it's coming from a police officer, you know, in most places in Africa, uh, the police does not have a very good image. But there are still a lot of examples like Officer Francis that can really inspire and bring a lot of change, you know, a lot of positive change, you know, for the next generation. In the school I attended for uh, the seminary I attended, we often have a kind of a mission statement. And that kind of mission statement says, I will leave this place better than I oh, met it. And from the presentation of Officer Francis, that is just what he is exactly doing. He's going to leave the police force of Ghana better than he met it. And there is no uh, legacy that is much more than that. So thank you, Officer Francis, for that inspiration. And we're all inspired, yeah. Thank you, Charles. And thank you, CC. Uh, let's go on. Let's go on to Babakir Adam Sharif. Can you activate your microphone? Babakir Adam Sharif. Babakir. No. Okay, let's try Mario Cabral. Getting you with. Good evening. Hello. Yes, I'm online. Um, I see that you're both connected right now with your microphones. Just, okay, just I want to introduce myself and I'm the Babikir Adam Sharif from Sudan, West Darfur. I am the as student in the AU University for the Master Degree in Admin uh, Business and Administrative. So I'm not preparing myself today, today for uh, sharing with you some information, but uh, next time I can prepare myself to a presentation, inshallah. Excellent. Yes, uh, as now I'm not preparing all the document, but I'm the busy with have to a small project with uh, some donor in the UNICEF. For the six months, I'm the running, 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 but next time I can prepare and I make the presentation. Thank you. We look forward to that. 
Do you, do you have I a just, comment about any of the of, of the presentation? Uh, I can prepare yes some uh, for a small project. I can share it next time. I can prepare. Okay, excellent. Uh, let's yes. move on to Mario Cabral. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Hello. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And Dr. Hello. Lambert. Hello. Nice to see you. Uh, let me see. Hello. Hello. Dr. We Lambert. Can, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and also, uh, greetings from uh, Timor Leste to my fellow students and some uh, alumni here. Uh, this is very impressive. Uh, especially regarding uh, to the presentation of uh, Assistant uh, Commissioner of Police, uh, Mr. Francis. As we all are aware that uh, <clears throat> as a part of uh, AAU students, we are proud of, of course. So the legacy is a trigger um, word that's very powerful. So one, all of us as an entity that be transformed as a champion. So in this case, in this special opportunity, I would uh, raise a question and my appreciation to um, as a champion, uh, Mr. Francis, about the worst impression or worst experience during your conduct your missions as a uh, police peacekeeping uh, in your um, your career. Yeah, so what is the worst, not the best one, but the worst experience that you feel as a trigger for you to transform, to share your own experience to others as a champion? I think uh, this is the my point. Thank you. Dr. Lambert? Thank you so much. Okay, okay, Dr. Lambert. Can I say, huh? can I say, okay. Oh, can I hear something? Please. Yes. Hello. Hello. Francis, Kwame, do you want to respond? Hello. Yes, please. Can you hear me? Hold yeah, on. I did. Francis Kwame is going to respond. Yes, um, if I did hear my colleague very well, uh, he was trying to ask me uh, to share with him my uh, two worst experiences as a police officer. I don't know, there were some things in whether I, I believe I got him right. Was that a question? Was that a question, please? Uh, that is uh, fine. Go ahead, that, Mario. That two, uh, okay. two, two worst experiences as a police officer, right? Was that a question? Uh, sorry, the main question is about the worst, not the better, but the opposite the from okay. the... Yes, yes the, have, what is okay, the worst? Yes, okay, please. I have, uh, I have two, I can't I have, go I have two experiences I will share with my friends here. Experience one, has to do with the United Nations not getting it right. When I was in Abi, I'm happy a colleague is coming from uh, the four region of Sudan. When I was in Abi, I had uh, I was given a United Nations Security Council resolution to go and establish the police component of UNISFA. I've already explained what UNISFA means. That is United Nations Interim Security Force in Abi. The police component of that resolution, I would say, was bogus. Why did I say so? At the time the UN deployed into Abyei, Sudan and South Sudan or Southern Sudan had never come to any agreement, let alone to fulfill some of the key elements in the in in the Security Council resolution that I was supposed to go and ensure that I established a police component. One, the resolution said Sudan and South Sudan will come together and establish what they call ABA administration, ABA judiciary, ABA three elements, I forgot the rest, executive, 
So in other words, this is a territory, I want you to picture it well. This is a territory in between South Sudan and Sudan that you need two countries to establish executive wing, to establish the judiciary wing, to establish legislative wing in there. And then it is these two countries that will come together and then form a police service in this entity called ABA. I got there, South Sudan and Sudan never agreed on anything. However, there were human beings in ABA that must be police. My worst moment, I was collecting dead bodies, dead bodies every day without justice. Without justice because one, the mandate itself was hollow. The mandate did not foresee that Sudan and South Sudan would not agree to form the police. The mandate did not foresee that Sudan and South Sudan would never come together to form administrative body. The mandate did not foresee that Sudan and South Sudan would not come together to form the judiciary body. The third one, they won't come together to form a parliamentary body. So there was total vacuum, vacuum in, 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 in legislation, vacuum in law enforcement, vacuum in and everything. However, I was there wearing the blueberry as a police officer trained to do the police work as per the United Nations mandate, but not per as per how I do it in Ghana or how the Sudanese would like to do it or how the South Sudanese would like to do it. And so it was a mess, a mess, a mess. By the time I left ABA, I lost my aesthetic value. I was exposed to only horrible scenes, horrible scenes, horrible scenes for one full year before I was, re I was recalled to, to Italy. The second one has to do with my own country here. When I joined the police about one year, I was then as part of our training process, I was on a, high, I was on a, a patrol somewhere. And then, in fact, let me, it's not a highway patrol, but a motor traffic law enforcement patrol. Motor traffic law enforcement patrol. Where I saw a gentleman who was driving, he was driving a bus with a license for a lesser vehicle. In other words, this gentleman was driving a bus with a license only meant for license B, only meant for um, saloon vehicles and then low CC vehicles. So I challenged the passengers on board that I am not convinced, I wasn't convinced this guy can drive you people on this highway. I, I had my nightmare. I saw somebody of the, of, of the age of my mother fell on her knee, begging me, let, let us go. He was the one who drove us from all this distance up. To, I said, Madam, Mama, you are like my mother. You are making my work very difficult for me. As I see you, I'm seeing you like my mother nearly before me, which you should not do. It will be very difficult for me to say no to you. But by my profession, I must say no. Finally, I surrendered <coughs> to her call. Look, my good friends, they drove about 50 kilometers and now all of them got killed. So my worst moment, so far too. So far too. One, I could not control the situation. Two, I should have insisted on my police principle and save life, but I didn't. Because I'm a human being. Africa, if you have another person kneeling before you, who are you? As somebody who looks like the sun to say no. So I surrendered and they died. Hmm. Uh, Dr. Lopez, okay, um, let's move on. Doctor, can I? Adeline Magnan. Hello, everyone. Hello, please. Uh, good evening. Uh, I would like to first. I would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Francis for for your presentation. And uh, my name is Etlan Maya, and I I am doing a postdoc in economic at AIU. I, I have a, a simple question to ask you. Mm, all, all your research can contribute specifically to the police service in your country. Yeah. 
is my question. Okay, maybe you went to low somewhere. All I had was all my research. I didn't get the actual substance of the question. All your, all your research, all your research can create specifically in the police service in your country. Please, can someone help me? I'm not getting the question. Because the, the background noise is just too much. I could hear uh, yeah, I can, my I can, friend. Yeah, I can tell you. Hello? Acting Commissioner. Some, Assistant some Commissioner. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Okay. There are yeah. more feedback. There are more feedback. Yes. What he said, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, please. yeah, I hear you. Yes, mm -hmm. you have conducted a lot of researches. Mm -hmm. How is All your research can specifically contribute uh, to the police service in your country, the police service in your country, your research. Oh, yes. Yes. Sign significantly. I just told you, we have a marine police on our, my right here is the Atlantic Ocean. On the Atlantic Ocean now, they are enforcing the fishing law, trying to arrest guys who are do do doing bad, using bad fishing practices, right? They are policing the brown waters against, against um, terrorism. And the highway patrols are set. I mean, we have them now on all our highways, especially the West African highway that traverses from Nigeria through Benin Republic, through Togo to Accra here. It's a very, it's a very, very, very busy highway, right? And so we have to police this highway effectively so that the ECOWAS citizens and other citizens can have free passage without becoming victim to armed robbers. Um, <laughs> the, the products are many. I just mentioned them. And even for my international operations, I, uh, they are there, they are there, they are on the slide, they are there, they are there. For example, in Sierra Leone, I was the one who did the final compilation, final assessment of United Nations police uh, um, role in Sierra Leone, and then the roles that were supposed to be passed on onto the uh, UN country team, to be specific, the United Nations Development Program. So my, my contribution is enormous, enormous. The slide, when you take the slide, and then you are not too clear, when you ask me, I will explain into details. Everything was research-based. That's why I got it done. For example, the Domestic Violence and Victims Support Unit they are here. Every division has a dying office established to enforce domestic violence, husband and wife issues, which need a professional touch other than the normal police behavior. You know, when you are dealing with husband, children issue, you need special training to manage those situations so that you do not aggravate the problem. Is that, that approach is different from dealing with robbers, fraudsters, and uh, murder. I mean, I learned in that. I learned in that. that. Okay, Dr. Lampard, can I contribute? Can I ask a question, Dr. Lampard? Yeah. Doctor? Yes, please go ahead. Let's hear your comment. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you very much, uh, um, Assistant Commissioner, Mr. Francis. Thank you. It was excellent. Yeah. Um, the two questions. Yeah, the first one is uh, the person from whom you got your inspiration, the policeman. You did not yes. tell us what he was doing. The action that got you inspired from him, this one. Uh, the second one is uh, the police issue, the relationship between the police and the ordinary citizen in the whole Africa, maybe the whole world also. I don't know what is happening in other continents, but in Africa, the relationship between uh, police and the ordinary system is not always too good. Um, I don't know if in your work, all the things you have done, the contribution you have made to the police uh, service in your country, have you succeeded in improving the atmosphere or the friendship or the relationship between the ordinary citizen and the police? Can a citizen, a Ghanaian, 
feel comfortable dealing with a police, a policeman. Thank you. So good. Uh, Fra Francis, do you want to respond to that? Your, 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 your microphone. Uh, yeah, thank uh, so you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, few times, few times we've had low blow, in other words, low rich. For example, for example, anytime anti-corruption, anytime anti-corruption institutions run a test, they they claim the Ghana police is the most corrupt, is the most corrupt institution in the country. Every year, that is the rating they give us. And uh, we, we have also, in fact, especially when I was at the research and planning, I had a few times to also challenge that, that as per our own study, that picture was not a uh, conclusive picture that we, we got, that we are the number one corrupt institution in the country, as they keep telling us. But I sincerely, the police public relation is not too good and is not equally but I think that we can do better. Hello. I think that we can Dr. do better. Lombard, may I contribute better. something? I think, do I have I the floor, please? My hands for so long. Do I have the floor? I haven't answered the questions, please. Do I? Thank you, Buddha. Do I have the floor, yeah. please? Yeah, go ahead and go and let, let Francis Kwame, the presenter, respond to a question. And then yes. after that, we, the floor will be open. Are you hearing me? So, so to be sincere with my friend who asked the question, our public, police public image is not, is not, is not good. And uh, that is why I have identified that if you are providing service, the person you are providing the service to should be able to appreciate your service by you doing what is right so that you can win the support and appreciation of the people. But if the police sees itself as an institution elsewhere and thinking that the public should accept it, that will not work. That is why I personally will champion this as one of my products. The, se the second question has to do with what was my role model doing? I mentioned it. One, I saw him as a very disciplined officer who got everybody within the division, I mean, to do what was supposed to be right. I saw him dealing with drunk cars, drunk, drunk police officers, getting them to order. I saw him dealing with persons who were poorly dressed. I mean, making sure that they, they conform to the police standard. I saw him making sure that people oh, were self and, and, and his resilience. And as a child, as a child or as an as a, um, adolescent then, seeing him all through and his demeanor and then his, his social standing, I was, I was attracted. And then I, I didn't hide that admiration. I went to him and said, Dad, I want to be like you. And he asked me three times, do you want to be like me? Yes to the third, and I say yes. And then he offered his advice. His advice. Thank you. Yes, Dr. I'm very, I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. Please, thank you. Can I contribute? Yes, go ahead. Let's hear, let's hear what, you, what is your name and where are you from? Hello? Hello? Mm. Aaron, I'm Aaron Boma. Aaron, go ahead, please. Aaron, okay, thank you. I'm Aaron Boma from Tanga, Tanzania. Yeah, I'm so happy. Dr. Lambert, may I continue? Yes, please. But let okay. us know your question or your comment. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Um, Aaron Boma from Tanga, Tanzania. I'm so happy to join in this live conference. I'm also a student of AIU, taking the master's degree in education. 
uh, my contribution is this that uh, uh, it is very important to consider the relationship between the pol police officers and the citizen as well because the police officers are there to make sure that the entire citizen of the entire nation they are all safe and the, it is very worse if at all the police officers are the one who mistreats the citizen in the society or in the nation so it is very important to consider this and to make sure that the society live in peace and harmony. Uh, may I continue, Dr. Lambert? Actually, yes. How much more do you have to say? <laughs> okay. So let me proceed. Uh, yeah, so I, I was- We want to make space for everybody to speak. So try and limit it to two or three minutes. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you very much. So that was my contribution. It is very important to make sure that police officers, they take care of the life of the, the local citizen and not mistreat them because there were some issues which happened here in Tanzania about three or oh, two weeks. The citizen shoot the police because of the police, uh, the police officers, they mistreat the entire citizen. So it is very important to consider this. That is my contribution. Thank you very much, Dr. Lambert. Doctor, Thank can you so I much, contribute? Aaron. Doctor, can I contribute? Yes, Dr. Remy, Lambert, please. Uh, I Thank, you. Should, should I Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and let Remy speak now. All right, all right. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me say good evening from uh, Nigeria to any part of the world. I don't know the time. Uh, however, uh, I'm trying to a bit uh, returning, returning the discussion back to the original concept of uh, the, within the concept of. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, so, sorry. I'm sorry. Is everybody on? Thank you. Uh, uh, first, I will talk. Uh, I want to contribute on uh, Mr. Francis. Uh, thank you very much for your inspiration. Uh, what is called is a uh, presentation is very highly inspiring. I really, really get a lot from his struggle, our struggle. And uh, he never allowed his struggle to become an obstacle, all those others to become obstacles to him. So uh, how do we connect this to what we are discussing? You know, we, we have seen police, police, you know, police is almost the same thing everywhere in the world. Uh, but let's bring it back to the education, the legacy. Okay, this one just to and the legacy, uh, how do we connect his experience with the legacy from my own point of view? Mm -hmm. Of the subject of the discussion. Uh, he has, uh, we, he, his experience has shown how African, especially in Africa and some part of the Asia, uh, struggles to, to uh, become somebody in life or to move ahead, uh, especially in terms of education because of the, uh, uh, the financial aspect of it. You know, it's, it's not like that in. Uh, in Europe and uh, America as it's supposed to be. So uh, how do we make it easier to send the legacy down to our future, the future generation? How? Some of us, we have, we had experience. So a speaker uh, right, spoke some hours ago and talks about what we have gotten. The knowledge, the, the knowledge we've gotten, we gather through the uh, academy uh, do we pass through? How do we uh, transmit it to the young generation? Uh, some, some may say that uh, they don't have the money, they don't have the financial capability to move on. I will say in this uh, way, though there are a lot of, it might be a kind of obstacle also to transmit this legacy to those to the, to the ones we are talking about, because we have a particular goal. 
We want to transmit this legacy to those ones that feel like they are not, they are not eligible enough to, to further education or to go and learn some work or some trade or to just find something else in life because of it, they feel like uh, they, they can't move on. But I want to say our motivation, the way we motivate people around us, I will give examples to that, uh, the way we motivate people around us. Also, hi, I'm a very young person. I, I, I have achieved a bit in life also. And uh, though Nigeria is very large, and with the little expanse, with the, with the expanse in Nigeria, I can say I've made some, uh, I've made some uh, uh, landmark also. But and how did I do Remy, I need to say that we're, we're concluding this presentation to move on to the next presentation. So if you could make it short. On this presentation, yes, based on the Mr. Francis presentation, how, how I, um, I'm a kind of connecting it together to this legacy we are talking about, the future generation. I want to say we can motivate the ones, the young ones, even though if they feel like they don't have the capacity, we have mediums, little mediums through which they can set up, we can help them, encourage them about the education. They, they, are, they felt like it's more, it's more harder to go into. Look at uh, uh, officer, uh, Mr. Francis, he started as, uh, at a small stage and before you know is where he is now today. And it's not because there's one big money somewhere. I, that is my own point of view. I'm saying that's what I'm saying. I don't know if that fits into the discussion right now. So my own problem in my own country, that's what I'm talking about right now. Why people are not, uh, they, want, they don't want to include themselves in this legacy we are talking about. We, I personally have encouraged a lot of people that have felt like they can never be someone in life and gradually, little by little, I, don't have, I didn't have any money, any finance. I didn't assist them financially. I only put them through the way they can make it work. How I made it work in my own part. Okay, with this, let's give Francis Kwame a chance to respond. Okay. I, can I? Oh, yeah. Um, I, share, I share exactly in what he's saying. It's true. The, the, the question is, uh, what, what do we do as individuals? Uh, I, as I, nature has been very kind to me, um, I, have, I, didn't, I never got into this rank before I started imparting on the Ghana police service. God has been very kind to me. And if you, if you realize somebody did a recap and then a person nearly drew tears on my face, it is, it is, it is a, very, a very emotional life journey. But sincerely, to God, Almighty be the glory for whatever seed he has in us. I have extended same to people around me till today. I pick somebody who I saw at age five, cutting goose, those from Africa will understand, cutting goose on the head in the market, moving up and down, selling for somebody she, she has been adopted for. And when I saw the girl, then this part of the head all oh, was peeled off. She was around age nine. I took that girl. She joined my family. I have taken care of her. She has just finished her MBA just last week. Till date, I don't know the father. I only saw the mother visiting me once. To God be the glory. Yeah, Lambert, I have a question. Uh, I, I don't know what I, I, I have the privilege to do that. Well, we have to move on to the next presentation now. We're, we're a little bit overdue. Which one? Which one? I'm not sure where that sound is coming from. Sorry, everybody. Hello, Mr. Lampard. Please, can I? A quick one. Can, can we take it to chat? Can you take your conversation to chat? So we're, we're going to conclude this. We're going to conclude right. this presentation, and you can continue the conversation in chat. And so, so we can continue on with the next presentation. But we can also continue on with your conversation in chat. So we want to thank. Hello. Uh, uh, click their link. It will take you to. Sir, may, may I ask you something? 
Is that Boniface talking? No, actually, I am uh, I, I am Dr. Aftab Alam from Delhi, India. Uh, I just want to ask you, I have been also invited, but the thing is, I don't know whether I have to speak or not. That is, that is the thing. Please just let me know. I am also as a speaker, I have been invited as a uh, just listener, as a just attendee or oh, salam, yes. whatever. Please. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and conclude this presentation now for Francis Kwame Tsidi, who actually created a presentation with a lot of response. And that's a very important issue that he is bringing up here. But we really appreciate his heart in his work and where he's going and the good things that he is doing. Oh, Mr. Lambert. He is changing, yes? No, sir, I'm sorry. I have already. Uh, I appreciate your things. I am. I am listening continuously. No problem. But the thing is, I have prepared some uh, inputs and I have submitted to ma'am as well. So in that regard only, I just want to ask. No, I don't know okay, uh, no. Doctor Alam, just wait one yeah. second. Please. Okay. So. Francis Kwame Tidi, thank you so much for bringing in a very powerful presentation. Please, thank you. Thank you all.